Hi, this is example number three of section 15.3. So we have here two blocks. One is moving, uh, block B is moving initially with a velocity of 15 meters per second. So we can actually say that the velocity B1 is 15 meters per second. And we have one block A at rest, so zero velocity. And then uh, the, the, the block A is attached to a spring and block B with a velocity and collides or has an impact with block A. We are being asked to find the maximum compression of a spring after that collision. We have to divide the problem in two stages. First, when they collide, and then after they are together as one single block, they move together. So we will solve this problem. First, the collision. When we uh, do the free body diagram of impact, try to the difference between the free body diagram of forces and the free body diagram of impact. So this is an impact diagram because as we got in the, the theory, the impacts are the integral of the force. So when I do the impact diagram of these two blocks, I put them together. So they attach to each other, A and B. And I don't even put the, the weight of that because the weight is neglected uh, in compared to the impact. And the impact, since I'm, I'm drawing them together, is an internal force. And I can even draw the, the, the spring of that force, but that the spring is also finite. Uh, so finite means that it has a magnitude very small in compared to the uh, magnitude of an impact. So when I see that, uh, that this diagram of, of impulse, if I add all the impulse, which are the integrals between two, t and 1 of forces dt, and that equals at the, the difference between the momentum, linear momentum in position 2 minus linear momentum in position 1, and that equals 2. So in this case, this will be 0 because I don't have any impact. The impact forces are internal. So I will have the addition that I have all the linear momentum of all the particles or block, in this case particles, in the position 2 minus all the linear momentum of the position 1. Since this is equal 0, we can say that there is conservation of linear momentum. This is what is called conservation of linear momentum. Okay, so what we have, we have the velocities in position one. We say, they tell us that a velocity of B is 15 meters per second and velocity of A is zero. So, and we know the mass of each of, each of these boxes, so we could actually say this is 15 times zero. Let me be very uh, uh, explicit. And this is 10 times so it's very important the signs of our velocity. So if we put our f coordinate c in x, y, this velocity goes to the left. So it's equals to minus 15 meters per second. And what is the velocity of 2? So they tell us that the two blocks attach uh, during the collision. So we can say that they have only one velocity, the two of them. So the linear momentum at the end will be 15 plus 10, a velocity all both together. So for that velocity, we find that that velocity will be, this is zero, right? Because it's 15 times zero. That will be minus 150 divided by 25. Is equals to six, so negative six meters per second. So it means that when they collide, they keep going in the mm, negative x direction. So we have that this is block A plus block B. They move together. So 
final velocity of A and B is equals negative 6 meters per second. So this is the analysis of the collision. What happened after the collision? After the collision, they, um, they move as a single body and they compress the springs. So for that, I'm going to do a second analysis. And for that, I could use the principle of work and energy. And as you remember, this is the total energy T2 plus V2 minus the initial energy. Then the initial state, the initial state is after the collision. So this is 1 is after collision and 2 is after spring is compressed. Okay? So these values 1 and 2 are different because we are analyzing a different uh, stage of the problem. So since our uh, non-conservative forces are zero because this is a smooth floor, so we don't have friction, so work is zero, we can say that T2 plus V2 is equals to T1 plus V1, and this is conservation of energy. So from here, we have to find those values. So we said here T1 is equals to that velocity. So it will be equals to um, both masses together, which is 15 plus 10 times the velocity, which is minus 6 squared, and it's 1 half, right? V1, the only that accumulates potential energy in this case is a spring because we, we are not moving in the y directions because of the gravity. And the spring in the stage 1 right after collision they, is not compressed yet, so the V1 is 0. Then we have T2. We want to know the maximal compression of the spring. It means when, when the velocity is 0 because after that it will start to move in the other direction, so T2 is zero. And V2, which is the potential energy in the second position, is when the spring is absolutely compressed. So we know that it's one half K, that delta S that we want to find. So how much, what is the maximum compression of the spring? So when, from here we substitute our values and then we have zero plus one half K, is equals to 10 kilonewtons. So we have to put our kilo right there because we want to be consistent with the units. Delta S is the maximum compression of the spring is equals to T1 plus V1. And T1 will be 1 half of 25 negative 6 squared. Obviously, it doesn't matter the negative because we, we will square that number. And then we can solve for delta S. And delta S, that is 0 0.3 meters. So at the end, we know that this is the maximum compression of spring after collision.